so a lot of time people face this particular problem not being able to think in english or words not coming in mind at the time what to do how to fill that silence that hi everybody how are you all well i'm shivangi gupta your celta certified english language coach and today you're watching english with shivangi today i have such an important topic for you that is going to benefit you a lot in your fluency whenever you are speaking whenever you are speaking something whether it's uh, in front of an audience you are just having a conversation there are some kind of words that you use and a lot of times these words they not considered good can you guess what am i actually talking about i'm talking about filler words do you use filler words a lot of people use a lot of filler words and these filler words are considered not to be great example of fluency or people think that somebody who's using a filler word that person is not a good speaker often these filler words are associated with bad reputation when it comes to speaking but do you know gap fillers or filler words as you commonly know they are not bad at all i'm going to have an argument today where i'm going to tell you the benefits of these filler words do not worry i have evidences and i'm backed with research i was actually concerned about this particular topic because in my opinion filler words they contribute a lot to your fluency you just need to know the art of using them in the correct way if you know the art of using them in the correct way they can improve your fluency and they can even make you sound a really great speaker when you speak english they're going to help you a lot in overcoming a lot of problems that english speaker faces for example hesitation not able to think in english pausing a lot taking time to think what's not coming into mind there are so many problems that english speaker faces but if you know the right art of using these filler words we can address a lot of these problems are you interested to know continue watching because i'm going to reveal a lot about this today first of all let me talk about the filler words the usage of filler words a lot of time you must have heard you know ah uh, well ah uh, you see so anyways basically actually these kind of words are considered as filler words are using filler words bad no they're not tell me tell me about a speaker that you admire there must be somebody who speaks good english that you admire has this person not used filler word ever ever has this ever happened that this person has not used even a single filler word i'm sure the answer is no because everybody uses filler words they're a part of human speech the study of linguistics says that filler words they are the actual part of your speech it is the way how people communicate and a lot of people they use filler words in their daily life it actually helps in the conversation using filler word can help you a lot while you are speaking in english so i was reading this particular article i was concerned about this topic and i did some of my research and i came across this particular article uh, on the news channel of the independent so the independent is one of the most famous news company i found this article where they took interview of two professors of edinburgh university so these two professors professor handford and federal from the university of edinburgh they were telling about the good points of using filler words even they are making an argument of the positive side of using these filler words it's not you are a bad speaker if you're using some of the filler words even i use them sometimes i use them and why do i do that i'm going to tell you first my personal story why i use filler words i don't use a filler word right after each word each line every time no 
I throw them in between. I use them hardly like three to four times in a video. Why do I do that? To make connectivity with all of you. If I come here and speak using without a filler word, you know what will happen. I will sound robotic. It will be as if you're reading a book. Do you want to read a book? You can definitely go and read a book. Why I am here then? I'm here so that I can explain you things. I can connect with you. You people are able to understand things. And if I don't make some kind of emotional connect with all of you, the purpose is not going to get fulfilled. So when you use a filler word, you are making an emotional connect with your audience, which is very much necessary. You know, you are telling your audience that you are including them, just like I did right now. I used the filler word, you know, but I'm not using the filler words after each and every line. That is definitely wrong. Some people, they use filler words after every word. That is going to be wrong. But using filler word once in a while, that's a great way of making a conversation. That person is a great conversationalist because the person knows how to make the audience or how to make the other person comfortable. So let's talk about the benefits of using filler words. What benefits are you going to get if you use filler words while speaking? So there are majorly two segments of benefits uh, that have been described. Number one, which I'm going to say is that is interactional or the conversational. So the benefit number one is conversational. Whenever you're interacting or conversing with somebody, whenever you're using a filler word, the person, the person makes an emotional connect. Plus, you're indicating somebody that you're replying to them. It's like you're addressing to the person. For example, if you have to say no to somebody, and if you directly say no, will it not sound rude? It will. So using a filler word can increase your politeness, the politeness with which you are replying to something. Whenever you're refusing something, whenever you're making a negative statement, using a filler word can bring down the effect and make your things more polite. Whenever you want to add a polite factor, you can definitely use a filler word. So filler word, they make it more polite. For example, again, I'm going to sh show you the example with this particular word. No. If I say, no, I don't want it. If I say, mm, you know, I don't want it. Thank you. Can you see the difference? Can you see the difference between the politeness? The first one can be really offensive. Whereas the second one, it eases the process. So filler words can increase your politeness. Number two, the benefit number two is the conversational benefit. It indicates that you're going to answer. So whenever somebody asks you a question and you're processing the question and you are trying to come up with an answer, if you start with a filler word. So as I was saying, so in order to answer the question, if you are using these kind of words, it shows the person that you're about to answer. You're addressing the question. If you will not indicate anything at all, the person might think that you're ignoring the question and the person, which again seems rude. And in conversations, this can cost you a lot if you're in a business meeting or if you're making a deal with a client because you need to show your responsiveness. So using a filler word at that particular time can show your responsiveness. The thing is that you need to know which filler word to use. This is a complete different topic, which filler word to use at which time. For that, we might have a video in the future. You need to keep looking for that. In this video, I'm not going to cover which filler word to use at which place. Right now, I'm going to tell you how you can use the filler words effectively in conversations. So today we are focusing just on that. So remember, whenever you use this filler word, you're indicating to the person that I am going to answer. And this makes even more connection during conversation. You're able to connect. Benefit number three is it gives you time to 
think about your answers. So a lot of time people face this particular problem not being able to think in English or words not coming in mind. At that time, what to do? How to fill that silence? That silence can be really long and the audience might forget what you were saying. In order to hook your audience, in order to hook the person you're talking to, you can use a filler word in between. This makes that gap shorter. Otherwise, the gap can become longer. The longer time you take to prepare for the answer, that silence can seem much more longer and people might feel a disconnect in between. But as soon as you throw a filler word, they know that you're gonna say something. The anticipation increases. Instead of decreasing, it increases. So whenever you want to take a long pause in order to get some time to think about something, you can throw in a filler word. Your audience will be hooked on and you'll get some time to process or think whatever you want to say next. It's going to give you a lot of time and I'm sure this will increase your fluency. Why? Because no one is going to know that you were not able to think about some words or you were struggling to think what to say next. People will think that you just changed your discourse of saying something and it will seem totally natural. You will not fumble with your words when you throw in just one little filler word at that particular time. You will not fumble for words. You get some time to think about what you want to say. Now let's come to the next part that is cognitive which I was telling. Cognitive is related to the brain and how the brain processes the information. The brain absorbs the information that is related to cognitive. Now cognitive benefits of using filler words. I know these are a bit technical terms but try to understand. You will be able to understand. It's not that much difficult I'm sure. So whenever you're using a filler word, cognitive benefit number one is that it gives time to your audience to process whatever you have said. Filler words as much as they're important for a speaker, they are important for a listener too. When you throw in a filler word after saying something really complex, it gives time for your audience to think about it, to process it. They're able to process it easily. Remember the example that I gave you in the starting about reading a book or sounding robotic? Otherwise, it will be as complex as reading a book. Why do people don't like reading books? Because lots and lots of complex information written all together makes it hazy for them to understand everything, difficult for them to understand. When we are doing the same thing while speaking, it will become difficult for the audience to understand you. And that is what we need to avoid. In order to avoid that, we can just simply throw a filler word. And your audience will get some time to process whatever you have said. That's why listening to English is easier rather than reading it. Sometimes when you listen to it, it becomes easier. When you listen to podcasts, it becomes easier. You're able to listen to podcasts. You're able to listen to audiobooks quite easily rather than reading them. Because while reading, it becomes a bit complex. There are no emotions there. You cannot read emotions. But while speaking, you can feel the emotions. And when you throw just one filler word, your audience will have that time to process whatever you said and it will become easier. The whole process becomes easier. Now, cognitive benefit number two, that is, it shows your thinking process. Sometimes in order to be able to connect with your audience, you need to show them that you're thinking about something. And when you use a filler word in between, it shows them the thinking process. You've said something, you've said a line or a few bunch of lines. After that, you said one filler word in order to show them that you're thinking about something that you want to say next and you're preparing your audience for that particular thing. So you're again preparing your audience plus you're showing them your thinking process. This makes you more human because this appeals to the emotions. And hence again, we're not sounding robotic. So these were the benefits of the gap fillers that we've discussed. But remember, there are situations where you need to avoid them too. Just two situations. That's your interviews 
job interviews and your presentations. Business presentations. Experts says the linguistic experts, people who have done PhDs in linguism, in understanding language, English language, conversations. Even they say that you can use filler words even in a business meeting, not in much quantity, just few words. It's okay because again, it shows the person you're talking to that you're a human, whether it's a client or uh, your colleague, it shows that you're a human, you're not a robot there. You're there to make a conversation, a discussion. But still, do not use filler words during an interview or a presentation because it's a totally formal setting. And when we are talking about formal settings, we avoid filler words because filler words are considered informal, not formal. But anyways, if you are using filler words in day-to-day -day conversations, don't worry, feel free to use them. You're good to go because they don't make much of a difference. They don't make you a bad speaker. In fact, they are a part of conversations. They make conversations more meaningful and easier to understand. So go ahead, use your filler words if you're not a professional speaker who's on the stage giving a presentation. And let me tell you, even people in TED Talk, they throw just one or two filler words here and there in between. So that was all about filler words today. I hope you found this video helpful and you're going to apply whatever I've told you regarding filler words. That's it for more awesome lessons like these. Do subscribe the channel because one new lesson comes every day at 8 a.m. sharp for you so that you can improve your English speaking and public speaking skills. I'm Shivangi Gupta and I'll see you next time till then. Take care and bye.